and I am your current city clerk. I've been in that position for the last couple of years and have worked in the clerk's office since 2005. Before that, I worked as a precinct chairman at Coppin School, so I've been involved in the election process in the city for almost 20 years now. I'd like to do something a little different than the usual campaigning and talk about the upcoming presidential election and what Lincoln Park voters can expect. We've been preparing for this election for many months according to state laws and guidelines. This is not new for us. It's what we do on a daily basis. Despite what you may be hearing on the news or social media, we are confident that everything has been done to ensure a smooth day for the voters on November 3rd. As a voter in Lincoln Park, you have the choice to vote either in person or by absentee ballot. We encourage voters to use the state website, michigan.gov vote, to check your registration status and polling locations. If desired, you can also use this website to request an absentee ballot and to check your application and ballot status. Every voter should make their choice based on their personal preference or situation. Please don't base your decision on statements made in the news or on social media. Do what's right for you. In-person voting um, will be available at all of the normal voting precincts on Election Day between 7 a.m. and 8 p.m. We request the use of masks inside our precinct, and social distancing will be used for your safety and ours. Because of the limited space from spreading things out, it could mean that lines appear longer and may extend outside buildings. Please dress appropriately for the weather on Election Day. The precinct is a campaign-free zone. By state law, campaigning is not allowed within 100 feet of the entrance to the polling place. You will be required to move or cover anything political while inside. This includes hats, shirts, buttons, and literature. Anything with a candidate name or slogan. Please also do not engage in political discussion in the precinct. Absentee voters must complete an application for an absentee ballot. We cannot issue a ballot without an application. The clerk's office does not send unsolicited applications. If you're getting them, they are coming from a voter advocacy group, voter advocacy group or a political party or a union or some other outside source. They're not coming from us. Our first mailing date for the absentee ballots is September 25th. Your ballot should arrive at the beginning of October. We will be processing the AV requests that we have already gotten before we issue any ballots over the counter. Those ballots will be available over the counter beginning on September 28th. Picture ID is required to obtain your AV ballot in person, and the law does not allow us to give your AV ballot to anyone but you. If your spouse or friend delivers your application, we must mail your ballot. By law, the last day for us to mail an AV ballot is October 30th. We do not, however, recommend waiting this late to request your ballot. While it's the legal date for us to mail, it can take three to five days for first-class mail delivery, and it's not realistic for you to be able to expect the post office to do it to return that to us in one day. Please return your ballot as soon as you're done voting. Ballots must be received in our office by 8 p.m. on Election Day to be counted. You can return your ballot in person at the clerk's office during regular business hours or by using our 24-hour drop box just outside of City Hall. You can also use the postal mail if you desire. 70 cents postage is required to mail the ballot to us. Just make sure you allow ample time for the post office to deliver it to us by the 8 p.m. Election Day deadline. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Tom Carnes. I'm a candidate for the Office of Mayor with the City of Lincoln Park. I am the current mayor, having been elected in November of uh, 2013. 
In my work experience, I was a police officer for 31 years. Eight of those years, I was uh, the chief of the police department. Um, since I have retired from the police department, I have been a substitute teacher at the Lincoln Park High School uh, full time in that position. Um, I am married. I have uh, three children. All my children are adult right now, but uh, they all reside in the city of Lincoln Park. Um, two of them have purchased homes that also in, in Lincoln Park, so they're starting their lives, starting their lives out uh, in LP like we did so many years ago. I have been blessed with a uh, with a grandson who is growing up in, in Lincoln Park and so I'm looking forward to how he is going to blossom and then uh, going into uh, the, the Lincoln Park schools. I'm an active volunteer with the, with the city also. I've been a member of the uh, Lincoln Park Exchange Club whose primary purpose is the prevention of child abuse. I've been a member for 21 years of a president, past president, and I've also been the, the national president of that, that organization. I am uh, the chairman of the board of the Lincoln Park Community Credit Union, and I also serve as president of the Lincoln Park School Educational Foundation. That is the uh, fundraising arm that uh, does things for the, for the schools and the, the teachers and the kids that the, the school's regular budget cannot uh, cannot pay for or choose not to pay for. I, through working at the, the high school, I've also been came involved with a uh, youth organization. It's a, an exchange club for high school students that teaches them leadership. For the past uh, four years, other than um, when COVID hit, the, the main part of that um, club has been a trip to the, the state capitol for a child abuse prevention um, day kickoff and then to a tour of the, of the of the capital my goal as mayor has been simple through through the years and that it was to make Lincoln Park a, a better place to live um, and we came in initially back in November of 13 and shortly thereafter Lincoln Park came into a, a financial a problem situation in which emergency manager had to come in and then a regional transition advisory board. Um, since that time we have made some some great great inroads. Um, as I mentioned we are under the regional transition advisory board but by working with them uh, we were able to come out of their control far sooner than we anticipated. And then within a year after that, or maybe a year and a half, we were able to get the fund balance up to the point where, where we needed it to be and then concentrate on our rebuilding efforts. So as we go into now, our main priority, or I main priority, is for the road repairs. We have some of our roads that are in terrible shape, some are in fair condition. But we need to spend as much as we possibly can to get to get these fixed. Um, not everybody is going to see their road done right away, but we have a plan to to take care of it and to see that all will be repaired. Um, not within the next few years, but we have a plan to make sure that that is going to happen. Um, back in November of 13, uh, you saw fit to approve a road bond, a 20 million dollar road bond. Um, we were not able to um, initiate that until approximately a year and a half ago or two years ago. So those funds are going into the repair of the roads also. We have uh, living through some very interesting times uh, with the COVID-19. Um, our police and fire department did a fantastic job for us during those, those times. And we're coming out of it kind of uncertain with what funds are going to be available to us through the state and and through the federal government? Um, we've we've made some reductions in preparation for that, but we've also went through and made sure that all of our union contracts have been settled, so we know what our costs are and what we're going to have to pay in the years. And as this works out, I think that we are going to be be in good shape. We might have to tighten our um, our bud our belts a little bit but we should be we should be fine we have uh, many challenges as as we move as we move forward 
but we are coming into our 100th year and as we come through and prepare for the next hundred years I ask for your support as as mayor and I look forward to working with you thank you good evening Lincoln Park my name is Chris Darzinski and I am running for mayor um, most of you know that I previously served two terms on City Council and um, in a larger context I've been politically involved for the majority of my adult life on many different issues at many different levels um, I would ask everyone to please go to my website where I've um, cataloged my 26 items that I know I can work on at City Hall um, the website is www.mayorlp.webs.com the most important thing to know is that these items need to be worked on at three different levels there are items I can work on by myself there are items that I will definitely need the encouragement and the teamwork of council and even resolutions from council to work on and then there are items that are larger more regional issues that I'm hoping I can be um, I'm going to be the leader on those in the Wayne County area working with other mayors and other officials um, at the county state and federal level the three most critical areas that I think we need to I need to concern myself with is number one the 21 percent poverty rate in Lincoln Park I've been working on the Capital Homestead Act which is an economic plan put together by the Center for Economic and Social Justice in 1984 this is something I've been involved in for 10 years this is not something new this is something that I have um, worked on and pushed forward in this city and the most important thing about the economic plan is that it impacts those at the lower end of the economic scale in the most positive way and it impacts their lives um, most greatly number two is the police and fire retirement fund and the review board that needs to be dramatically restructured increased in size and a new investment strategy needs to be um, needs to be looked at I have a, a lot of recommendations on that so again I do encourage you to go to my website that you see on the screen there www.mayorlp.webs.com and please take the time to look at all this information as I spent over five months putting this website together and giving everybody all the details and as much content as I possibly could number three is looking at the business district as a whole I put together a five-year economic plan which is um, a more in-depth variation of the 10-year plan that I submitted in 2012 this is something that can be worked on um, by myself the council the DDA the EDC and I'd be looking for about 50 residents um, per year to be involved in this so that's about 250 residents over a five-year period giving two hours a week of their time if we get enough big team together we can we can do this uh, so again I encourage you to uh, go to my website www.mayorlp.webs.com and thank you for your time I'm Councilman Higgins. I'm running for re-election for City Council in Lincoln Park, and I'd like to ask you for your vote. I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself first, and then a little bit about what I've accomplished, and then what I hope to accomplish in the future. I'm a lifelong resident of Lincoln Park, grew up here, graduated from Lincoln Park High School. I'm the son of Marilyn and Charles Higgins, both who served uh, on office in Lincoln Park. And growing up in their home, it was very much taught to me that you need to be involved in your city and, and give back as much as you can. And that is what I've done my whole entire adult life and what I want to continue doing. I'm also, I've also been a varsity swim coach at the high school for over 30 years. I'm the longest lasting coach at the high school. And I bet it's why my signs say coach on it. And, a lot of people just know me by coach and I'm very proud of that as well I have served uh, four terms on the City Council and this would be my fifth term 
Um, I have, uh, I'm a founding member and I am the current chairman of a group called the Hands of the City of Lincoln Park. We are responsible for bringing back the Memorial Day Parade, for putting on nine different events in the city, which bring in thousands of people to our city. And our hope is that by putting on these events that, and bringing people in and showing what a wonderful city we have, that people will see, come here, invest here, and become part of our city. All our events that we put on are for charity, and all the money goes back to that the groups, whether it be the schools, whether it be the library, which we have put a lot of money into, or whether it be um, the Memorial Day Parade itself, which cost a, a, a good sum of money, but it is well worth it when we can honor our veterans. I'd like to say that I'm very proud of some of the things that I've accomplished while I've been on the City Council. Chief of which, and most important, is when we brought this city back out of receivership. I was part of a team that did that, and I like to think that I was a strong part of that team. And we are finally got our city back on a firm, strong footing where we can move our city forward. And there was a lot of things that were been neglected over the over the time where the state had control. Our roads were allowed to deteriorate, and our city functions were brought down to almost nothing. We're bringing them back. In the next few years, we hope to invest over $300 million in our roads. We are bringing back our programs and we've reinvested it so that we can have enough employees to actually get the jobs done that need to be done, making our city safe with more police and fire. And also, of course, taking care of our DPS so they can take care of our roads and our infrastructure. Um, along the way, I've also brought winter walking to the high school. I brought the re recycling program, uh, meaning the big dumpsters that you'll find behind uh, the library and at many of the schools. All of that money goes to the schools and to the library, which is less money that we have to pay for tax dollars and keep our programs going. Anything we can do to save tax dollars money, I'm in favor of, and that's one of the things we can do. I'm very proud that I've been pushing for a long time, and this year we got a new sign ordinance. That ordinance will be a big step into bringing into new businesses into the city and making it more fair for the, for the pro businesses that are here to keep flourishing. We don't need to lose any more businesses. We need to bring in more businesses. And the buildings that are here, we need to make sure that they're safe before other businesses can move into. This is something that has been neglected over the years and something that we have now stepping forward to doing. It's a big part of my program and I truly believe that we need to reestablish something on the Sears property and we need to get the Lincoln Park Plaza running again. Uh, the current owners have not lived up to what we want them to and it's time for the city to put our foot down and say what we want done and get it done. Again, I've been a lifelong resident. I have served on three different commissions. I've served on the council for four terms, and I want a fifth term. I want to keep helping our city. Thank you very much. Hello, fellow Lincoln Parkers. My name is Daniel Murray, Jr., and I am currently running for the 2020 Lincoln Park City Council. Um, my family history, I, I've grown up, not grown up here, but 11 and a half years I've devoted my time. I, I do a lot of community service. Um, I am married to a wonderful wife of 12 years almost, 14 together. I have two beautiful fur babies, Sammy and Penny. If you have any questions or need to reach out for any reason, you can reach me at dmurrayjr underscore lp city council dot com or 734-288-7678. Why I'm running. The safety and prosperity of the city. 
is the most concerning to me. We need to build on our reserves. We need to build up the safety where people feel comfortable going to the park with their children and not having to leave just because the sun's starting to go down. The three most important priorities to me are the police reserves, safety, and infrastructure, and the animal shelter, as I am a lover of all fur babies. The biggest challenge for the city is our funds and our tax base. We need to build that. We need to get big box stores in. We need to get small retail stores in. We need a bigger tax base and that would create the infrastructure, help create the infrastructure that this city so desperately needs. My two-year hopes are to work with my fellow council people and to building the roads, the building the buildings and getting um, big box stores in here. We need we need something huge. Once again, you can reach me at D Murray Jr. underscore LP City Council dot com or seven three four two eight eight seven six seven eight and I will be able to address your concerns if you have any further concerns. Please get out and vote. Please get out and vote on November 3rd, but I would greatly appreciate your support for our local uh, city council. Thank you very much. Okay. Hello, everybody. I'm Maureen Tobin, and I am running for city council. Uh, I have been a resident of Lincoln Park for over 20 years. I've been married for 30 years. I have two children, Jack and Jillian, and they are graduates of Lincoln Park High School. Uh, for the last five and a half years, I have worked for the city of Lincoln Park. I started out as a building supervisor, and I'm currently your event coordinator. I'm responsible for bringing back the Lincoln Park Summer Concert Series. I've created the Zombie Apocalypse, Art in the Park, summertime kids program I also put on breakfast with Santa and the daddy daughter dance through the last five and a half years I have met so many residents I talk to them they tell me their concerns what issues they'd like to see improved upon and I have total respect for our residents the last week or so I've been driving around the city and I've gone into some neighborhoods that I haven't been in before and I have to tell you we have a beautiful city here some of the neighborhoods are just outstanding and I'm just really happy for all the support that I've been receiving from all the residents. I am currently the district president of the Michigan District Exchange Clubs. I have been a member of the Lincoln Park Exchange Club for the last six years. I've been involved in Lincoln Park Days for the last six years. And I also have an event that I've created with the Exchange Club called 1111 at 7. And that is an event that we do on Veterans Day every year and we raise funds to house homeless veterans in the southeast Michigan area. It's something I'm very proud of and we've housed a lot of veterans and there's nothing I can think worse than being a veteran serving our country and not having a home to go to and having to be out in the cold. So that's something I'm very proud of. While talking with residents, I've uh, listened to their concerns and one of the issues that we have is the business district and bringing in businesses to the city. I think that is something that we all need to work very hard on um, to improve. Uh, we have a nice business district. We just have to make it easier for businesses to come in um, and for current businesses to keep their businesses up so it's more inviting. I, I can't tell you enough. I've worked with the DDA for a few months and I've gone out to the businesses. I've met the business owners and they're wonderful and they want to have contact with the city and they want to be involved. And that's one of the greatest things in Lincoln Park is the residents, the businesses. They all want to be involved to create a better city for all of us. I'm looking forward, if given the opportunity, to help make that happen. In closing, I just want to say thank you, everyone, for your support. You can be assured I will work hard for you, for the city, and we have great things to happen in the future, and we are heading in the right direction. Thank you. God bless. Hello residents of Lincoln Park. 
I'm Carlos Salcido and I would like to share some history about myself as it relates to the city of Lincoln Park. I attended elementary at Frank G. Mixter School located on Electric Avenue. At the age of eight, I made my first communion at Christ the Good Shepherd Church on Riverbank Street. I attended Huff Junior High, which was located at the now Lincoln Park Middle School on Lafayette Boulevard. While in ninth grade, I worked part-time at Sam's Beer Store on Fort Street, stocking shelves and filling coolers. Then on to Lincoln Park High School. While in my senior year, I was a stock clerk and cashier at Crown Discount on 2040 Fort Street. I graduated Lincoln Park High in June of 1979. Other places that I worked in Lincoln Park include Complete Laundry on Southfield Road, Perry Drugs and Rite Aid on Dixon Southfield, which is now a Wendy's. I was a stock clerk at Kroger on Southfield and Dix when it first opened up. I'm currently employed by the Ford Motor Company. In 1992, I married my wife, Marcia at St. Henry's Church on Council Avenue. I have a daughter, Allison, and a son, Carlos Jr. Both are in their mid-20s. On another note of interest, in March of 1994, I bowled my first and only 300 game right here in Lincoln Park at Belmar Lanes on Ford Street. In over 53 years of living in Lincoln Park, I have had many fond memories in history. And I would like to continue that history. That's why I am seeking re-election for City Council. Once again, I will listen to your questions and concerns and address them accordingly. I will continue to promote Lincoln Park as a good place to live and locate a business. I will also continue to promote businesses that come to Lincoln Park as well as businesses currently in the city. I believe all residents would like to see the development at the old Sears Plaza and the Ford and Ammons Plaza as well. That should be a top priority for all city leaders to push for businesses in those areas. If elected, I would like to get more involved in, with the sidewalk program, tree removal, and tree trimming of city trees. Lastly, with over 15 parks in our city, I would like to explore the possibility or feasibility of one or two dog parks. So Lincoln Park residents can take their dogs for exercise by running and playing off-leash in a controlled environment under the supervision of their owners. In closing, I would like to wish all the candidates running for City Council all the best. It's been an honor and a pleasure to represent the residents of Lincoln Park these past two years. Take care and stay safe. Thank you for tuning in. Please vote for Carlos Salcido on November 3rd. Thank you. Hello. My name is Eric Zor, and I'm running for a seat on the Lincoln Park City Council. Just to get to know me a little, I've been a proud Lincoln Park resident since 1985. That's when my wife Holly and I were first married and moved into Lincoln Park. Our daughter and two sons, as well as our son-in-law and daughter-in-law, were all raised in Lincoln Park and attended Lincoln Park schools. Three of our grandchildren are enrolled in Lincoln Park schools, and our oldest grandson graduated from the Lincoln Park High School last spring. Our only granddaughter, who just turned two, will follow the family tradition of attending Lincoln Park schools in a few short years. As a teen, I worked for my father at Reliable Battery, located here in Lincoln Park, and continued working there part-time throughout the years while working at Greenfield Village full-time for several years. And in 1997, I went to work full-time for Ford Motor Company, where I am still employed. I also am a part-time court officer at the 25th District Court and a part-time supervisor for the court's work service program. I've been a Lincoln Park Reserve Police Officer since 1995, which is a part-time unpaid volunteer position. I'm a lector at my church, and I also a member of the Knights of Columbus and a fourth degree knight. I coached baseball, softball, and junior rails football for my kids' teams years ago, and I briefly coached junior rails again for my grandson's team more recently. Go rails! I am running for Lane Park City Council because I want to help better our community. Some areas, I feel, need more attention 
is, is uh, in our infrastructure such as roads, city services, and there are some homes and buildings that need some overdue enhancements. We have seen some attention to these areas in the past several years, but I think there is still much more that can and should be done. I'd like to develop a plan to work on ideas that could give residents a helping hand may, by maybe finding grants or even a volunteer skill force to accomplish this and we can all feel pride for what is accomplished when we all work together. Thank you. Okay. Hi, I'm Jason Baker. I'm running for city council. I'm 43 years old and I've lived in Lincoln Park my entire life. Uh, I am a third generation Lincoln Parker. My daughter would be a fourth generation Lincoln Parker. My grandma bought her home in 1951 right over there on LeBlanc. Uh, my mom, who grew up on LeBlanc, bought her house in Mayflower and I grew up there and then I bought my grandmother's house in 2002. And I've raised my daughter there ever since. I graduated from Lincoln Park High School back in 1995, class of 95. And afterwards, I got my first job here in Lincoln Park as a mechanic right over there on Southfield. I went to college at Henry Ford Community College and I went to college for automotive technology and music. I decided to change my career field and became a nurse in my late 20s. I got a degree in automotive, or excuse me, got a degree in nursing and liberal arts from Henry Ford. I then continued my education, went to Madonna University, got a bachelor's of science of nursing. Uh, I went and continued on with, to my master's and got a degree as a adult geriatric acute care nurse practitioner. And I'm wrapping up my last and final degree, I swear to God, as a doctor of nursing practice at Maryville University, which I'll be graduating in May of next year. I am an elected official on the financial board of the American Nursing Association. For a living, I am a nurse practitioner. I work in two different acute care clinics, one here in Allen Park, right across, you know, and uh, one in uh, Hamtramck. And then I also am practicing internal medicine, and I visit the elderly in their homes, the ones who are too disabled to make it to the offices. At, uh, when, uh, at later at, after work, I uh, teach college. I'm a college professor at Baker Community College. Um, I teach healthcare politics. I've taught nursing. I was the um, nursing. I was the uh, science teacher of the year in 2017. Very extremely proud of that. Um, so I, I really love what I do. I love my career path. It's been excellent. Um, why am I running for office? Because I want to help Lincoln Park. I've lived here all my life, uh, 43 years, and it's a wonderful city. It's a wonderful community. I want to see the city. I want to see the best for the city. I want to see the city thriving. I want to see people move to it. I want to see just the best for things. Um, I don't want to be I see people complain about problems. I want to be part of the solution. Uh, the three most important priorities for Lincoln Park, I think number one, it's bringing back businesses. I think that we've got a lot of empty buildings here in Lincoln Park, and I like to see businesses come back. I remember a time when I was a kid walking through the plaza, seeing thriving businesses, J.C. Penney's. We used to see the uh, what Kresge's, um, Farmer Jack's, or the Sears Center with Lincoln Park 8, and the record store. I remember these things and I want these things back. I want to see businesses thriving in Lincoln Park and I want to see us all shopping there. I think another uh, challenge we have here and another priority in Lincoln Park is bringing new homeowners in. I think if we bring in more businesses, we'll have new homeowners. And we can see those home, uh, home costs go up. And of course that brings in more revenue for the city. The third priority I think is bringing in more resources for some of our community members. That could be for the elderly to have more resources. That could be more resources for the high school, maybe vocational programs. I think the more resources in this time of COVID, it's you know, the more the better. Um, what do I think the biggest challenge in Lincoln Park, what do I think the biggest challenge facing Lincoln Park is? I just simply think it's bringing back those businesses. I think that's the only way we're gonna progress forward is by really making it a thriving city. Um, what are my hopes for the next two years? What are my hopes for the next two years if elected? Honestly, I would just like to see something that I've done come to fruition. I would like to see something that I've done help out the city and something I've done that I could point and be like, I did that. I made my city better. I helped out the community a little bit more. 
I just want to see the best for my city. Um, that's all. I'm not going to make any promises about what I'm going to do. I'm just going to say, hey, I'm going to do my best. If you vote for me, you're voting for somebody with integrity. You're voting for somebody with a good moral and ethical character. Uh, you're voting for somebody who just wants to do the best for his city and truly, honestly, just wants to help out. I just want to give a hand and give a little bit back to my community. So please, in November, vote for me, Jason Baker. I think it's maybe probably hopefully first on the ballot. Jason Baker, vote for me. And hopefully you'll see a little bit of improvement in our community over the next two years. Thank you so much. Hello, my name is Peter Rommel. I'm running, I'm running as a writing candidate for Lincoln Park City Council. I grew up in Lincoln Park. This is my hometown, and I've lived here for the majority of my life. I attended Mixer Elementary School, later attended Lincoln Park High School, and then graduated from Mount Carmel in the year of 2000. I later went on to attend Grand Valley State University, where I majored in public relations and marketing. I also studied contract law, political science, business, and finance. As a youth, I played Little League in Lincoln Park and also studied martial arts at the band shell. This further reinforced my mindset of teamwork and looking at the greater picture of putting others above yourself. I found myself at an early age drawn to doing charity work that has continued throughout my life. I've had the pleasure for working for such organizations as Habitat for Humanity, Goodfellas, and doing painting for daycares for Salvation Army. The driving force behind doing such was the, for the greater good of all, not for my own accolades. I tutored a class of third grade students when I was in high school. I privately tutored one student who was having difficulties. I'm proud to say that I was able to help this child into proceeding and advancing to the next grade and not being held back. I did this because I saw a child in need and I sought to help, out to help him just as I saw an ambulance pull up one winter's day in front of a neighbor's house. The paramedics were having issue transporting the woman who lived there from her house to the ambulance. My brother and I sprung into action, asked to help. We were directed, if we could, to go ahead and shovel a path so that they could get the gurney out. And I can tell you, I've never shoveled snow faster in my life. There was a purpose, a need to be met, and I felt joy in being a part of something bigger than myself. You see, the reason I'm running for city council is simple. I come from a long line of people who have dedicated their lives to serving others. I have had family members serve in every branch of the military, and I've also had family members serve in every occupation of first response. I believe myself to be the candidate people are asking for, someone who will be decisive in getting the results the residents need. For example, I was part of the crew who built the addition to the Banshell when that was a need. You see, I've dealt with blight, helped police to apprehend suspects that have committed home invasions and hit and runs. To me, words are cheap, actions speak much louder. I feel the biggest needs to be addressed going forward are revenue, crime, and residents leaving. The way in which funds are allocated greatly impacts us not just today, but later down the road. This is why it's important to get it the right the first time, rather than trying to cut corners and paying more in the long term, having to do it a second or third time. So, so some might say, what if we have lack of funds? To which my reply is, that is why I've been saying from the very get-go, and I've been very vocal about getting grant funding for our city. There are many forms of grants at the state and federal level. Some are more broad, such as block grants. Others are more specific such as organizations or f groups and um, uh, federal buildings or f federal uh, assets such as FEMA who you can specifically uh, reach out to to get uh, funding for fire stations. I've done a lot of research in this matter. I've studied finance and worked in logistics and banking. I'm not daunted by red tape. If you look at the Facebook account that I have, you will see a, a long ago suggested that someone be hired on behalf of the city as a grant writer for grant proposals and to seek out funding for the city. If that were unable to happen, then I personally would work on it. By the way, Michigan receives roughly just under $2,500 per resident in grant funding. It's a lot of, a lot of uh, dollars out there for someone to receive. Another statistic that may surprise some is that there are over 500 plus cities and municipalities in Michigan. 
according to data I found, Lincoln Park ranked 33rd highest in regards to violent crimes. I believe we can do a lot better as a city. Finding ways to increase funding for police rather than continuing to cut funding would be a step in the right direction. Having a neighborhood watch program that works in unity with law enforcement has shown to reduce crime by as much as 22% in cities that have properly Im implemented this uh, process. I believe this to be part of the reason you see the reduction in population. According to census reports, we've lost over 4,000 residents, or roughly 10% uh, of our population in the last 20 years. We need to make our city more inviting to those who want to remain here and those who would like to become Lincoln Park residents. The biggest issue I see facing our city is business. If we have a lower crime rate, more revenue to address blight via grants, and a growing resident residential base will become more inviting to new businesses. I've known and talked with people who do scouting for businesses, and I'm aware of the metrics they are looking for when they look for businesses, uh, when they look for cities to set up shop in. I've handled millions of dollars in my career, worked on marketing campaigns, and negotiated as the middleman. I've had people invest their life savings based on my character and ability to deliver results. In the next couple of years, I would like to see the city get back on the right track, not accept just good enough as good enough. When you fill out your ballot, just know the next two minutes that you take filling that ballot out will decide who represents you for the next two years. If you want someone who will be your chosen voice, then write in Peter Rommel, that's P-E-T-E-R-R-O-M-M-E-L, on the line that says Writing Candidate Under City Council and fill in the oval next to it. I will do all I can because I'm a driven person and I have a proven track record for those I work for and getting results for them. Thank you for your time. Hi fellow Lincoln Parkers, my name is Tracy Dupre and I'm running for City Council. I live in Lincoln Park, I moved back to Lincoln Park in 2015 had moved to Monroe for a while out of Lincoln Park, but it had a house here prior. So I do have some roots in the city. Um, I'm not a politician, but an involved citizen that is not happy with the state of our city. I became more involved with city business about two years ago when I retired and was looking th for things to do. I've been an animal rescue for many years. I volunteer to feed homeless people, shelter them, clothe them, help churches, volunteer in the city, and various other things to keep myself busy. My first passion with the city was the animal shelter. I did offer some free services and products and was told no. I was not able to form a 501c3 for the shelter either, which surprised me as a rescue person. Um, and honestly, I was floored. As I attended more city council meetings, I saw and heard more things going on and became more and more concerned. As I watched the council vote no on the marijuana issue after the citizens voted yes, I took action and was part of the team to get the marijuana back on the ballot, voted again, and it is passed, and it is passed council, and it is now active. I will always fight for fairness and what's right. The voters said yes twice. I've come up with a few business proposals to bring quality businesses into the city and have it be a win-win situation for the business and the city. I feel we also need a role in the city of business recruiter and we need to move quickly on this before we have more empty buildings that become liabilities. Example, Fort Street Plaza. Healthy businesses are a big part of our answer. Lincoln Park is also known to be hard to deal with by new business owners. This is a process I feel we need to review, revamp, and we need to change that reputation. I've taken two trainings on Narcan and carry it with me at all times, just in case we live downriver and we have an opioid epidemic. 
I'm here to help. I also feel citizens should bring their issues comfortably to city council and feel they're being heard. Issues are being followed up on and answers are communicated. Even if it's not what people want to hear, they deserve an answer. They deserve the respect of being heard and given a response. I have facilitated the opening of a state funded food pantry in partnership with Chandler Center in Lincoln Park. This is to be used to be run by American Indian Services which is no longer in our city. Will be open the second Wednesday of each month opening October 14th. I was blessed with the resource of the food needed to make plans quickly and working with any city any city is not quick. So I changed my course of action and contacted Chandler Center. I believe everything happens for a reason and this will be a great partnership. This will be a great resource for our lower income elderly and disabled community. I actually do a lot of volunteering and will always request citizen participation with events. I encourage people to get out, meet your neighbors, help organize, support what, what you like, have fun. It's amazing once you get out there and feel part of a team and that you're making a difference. It, it, the feeling is, is wonderful. Support the local farm market, help the parks and recreation, whatever it is that you're, that you're interested in. I left Ford in 2018 as a business IT finance manager with an accounting and auditing background after 33 years. I believe this helps me with financial issues, making good decisions, based on factual numbers and forecasts. This also gives me the ability to spot inconsistencies quickly and research them. I do support the police. I do support people's rights to peaceful protest and believe rioting, looting, and destruction are punishable by law and should be dealt with swiftly. My final statement. Let me help make Lincoln Park great again. Let's clean up the clean out the closets, air out the bad business, and move forward together. A good council is a team that works for the greatest good of the city and the citizens. That is my goal. Thank you. Hello, my name is Larry Kelsey and I've been your city councilman for the past six years. I take great pride in serving our citizens in our city. I've been married for 33 years, have two daughters, a stepson, and a granddaughter, and will soon be a great-grandfather in January. I live in Lincoln Park and graduated from the Lincoln Park High School. I served in the U.S. Army and was honorably discharged during the Vietnam War. I worked at Ford Motor Company for 38 years and served as the union local president. I was just recently elected as your precinct delegate, where my sole responsibility is to attend and vote at politically county conventions that affect issues within Lincoln Park. I have endorsements from the fire department and the UAW which help set me apart from others that are running on name only. I am on the police and fire retirement board, the planning commission, and the community forum at the Lincoln Park Presbyterian Church and I attend the citizens emergency response team meetings known as CERT. I ran for city council six years ago because I had volunteered on the city's citizens emergency response team and also a member of the Citizen Patrol Watch. By attending council meetings, I felt I could do more by running for city council. I also felt that some residents had a hard time getting issues resolved with the city and I wanted to help those citizens. I did this as a former UAW rep for many years and had the knowledge and commitment to work through many difficult issues that come up. The city has many issues that need to be addressed in the coming years. Our infrastructure is old and lacked maintenance for many years. The road bond was passed by the voters and we are using it and other Act 51 money to repair our aging roads. We are working on the water and sewer system and have started to televise, reline, and inspect our sewer system to get it back to where it should be. Our retention basin is aging and also needs to be updated and repairs made. This is a project we are doing on a yearly basis. In June and July of this year, I donated half of my council salary to the city to put towards some projects in the city. I believe that to lead, you lead by example, and I feel that I am doing that. When COVID-19 hit Michigan this spring, it really made a huge impact, 
not only for our residents, but to small businesses as well. It was devastating to everyone. As your councilman, I am here to provide any assistance to get the help you need so the city can get back on track. Our employees did a great job to protect our citizens and themselves from COVID during this time. I believe if we, if we can increase our housing stock price, continue to work on city blight, this will encourage people with higher incomes to set roots in Lincoln Park, to raise their families, and encourage more businesses that see a city on the move and want to do business here in Lincoln Park. In the next two years, my vision for the city is to communicate in town halls and other formats to talk about the issues that face us as a community. We need to be on the same level with our citizens and what they expect from the city and what we can provide them. Volunteer groups are a great start to help make us look and act like we love and care this beautiful city. I continue to work directly with our mayor, city management, our current council members, city workers, and most important, our residents on a regular basis for whom I have a great respect for all. These are all difficult challenges the city faces because of the cost. However, with your patience, I believe we can get this done. In closing, it's been an honor to be your councilman, and I would like to continue serving this city with your vote on November 3rd, 2020. Thank you, and have a nice night. My fellow residents, I'm Lillian Ross, your councilwoman, and I am running for re-election. Thank you for giving me a few minutes to tell you a little about myself. I am blessed to be a wife, mother, and your councilwoman. Whether wife, mother, volunteer, or councilwoman, I am grounded by a determination to improve the lives of those around me. It is my honor to be your representative, whether it's for city meetings, functions, or addressing your questions and concerns. As your councilwoman, I am focused on your concerns. Your concerns give us an opportunity to revisit our processes and procedures and see where we may improve. It is extremely important to me to be well informed and fair. I believe in making mindful decisions so our hard work and effort today can be a foundation for tomorrow. As a resident and a homeowner, I too am invested in the city. I believe we all want a beautiful, safe, and inviting city today and for our future. This requires us all to take pride and responsibility in our homes, businesses, and neighborhoods. We all must do our part, not just to rid blight, but to recognize the value in prioritizing life, health, and safety code requirements. This is very important to me. Moving us forward is definitely a team effort. I believe in working together, residents, businesses, employees, and elected officials. Together, we are a stronger community. Let us move forward together with kindness, respect, and honesty. Having lived in our community for over 23 years, I have found our community is filled with amazing people. It is you who continue to inspire me to seize another opportunity to ask every voter to allow me to continue to serve our community as your councilwoman. I have no doubt that working with you and for you is where I belong. At this time, I would like to thank my husband of 33 years, Colonel Ross, our sons, Tony and Andy, our friends and great neighbors for their full support. And thank you at home for taking the time to learn about me and the other candidates in this election. Before I close, I would like to share the words of our amazing Supreme Court Justice, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. A meaningful life is one lived not just for oneself, but for one's community. Again, my name is Lillian Ross, your city councilwoman. Let your voice be heard. Vote. Hello, Lincoln Park. My name is Richard Kudrak. 
I am a school board candidate in the November general election. The other three candidates are all running for re-election. I am your choice if you want to bring new and innovative ideas to the district deliberations. I am your choice if you want a board member who will represent all residents instead of only district employees and parents of school-aged children. I am your choice if you believe the superintendent works for the school board instead of the other way around. My immediate focus will be on transparency. All school board meetings should be live televised with well advertised reruns. Residents should be able to receive a satisfactory public response to a question asked in a school board meeting. As a school board member, I will demand the district publish a newsletter showing progress in recent events. It should place special emphasis on financial information with details showing the overall financial health with current and anticipated spending. The residents have a right to know how our money is being spent. In closing, my name is Richard Kudrak, and I am a school board candidate in the November general election. Like all concerned residents, I support public education, and with your support, I will strive to deliver the best possible product to the students. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Gordon Gilbert, and I'm running for re-election to the Lincoln Park School Board. Buenas tardes, padres y madres de nuestros estudiantes inteligentes. I grew up in Lincoln Park, and I graduated from Lincoln Park High School. I received my degrees from Madonna University. Professionally, I worked in the defense world for many years, mainly in the field of anti-submarine warfare, when the Cold War ended, I became the Assistant Director of Campus Safety for the College of Creative Studies in Detroit. I retired this past May. I think what I bring to the school board is my strong connection to the community. I have personally experienced the success as well as the challenges that our students face on a daily basis. This provides me with great insight. As the Board of Education often has to weigh significant decisions for the betterment of our community. But always remember this, the school board represents the student. Tus hijos son lo primero. I humbly ask that you vote for me on November 3rd, and I thank you for your time. Okay. Hello, my name is Natalie Chantarelli. I was raised in Lincoln Park and I would like to continue to serve on the Lincoln Park School Board. I have been in Lincoln Park School Board for the past two years. My involvement in Lincoln Park Schools began in the ninth grade at Lincoln Park High School and continued with my son's enrollment in Lincoln Park School in 2012. He is currently in the middle school and will be starting the high school next year. My goal has always been toward working towards improving the school district by getting more parents involved and enhancing student proficiency in subject areas. I hope you will vote for me in the next upcoming election. Thank you. All right. Hi, my name is Phyllis DeFiori, and once again, I am running for the Lincoln Park School Board. My husband and daughter both graduated from Lincoln Park Public Schools. I've been actively involved in the Lincoln Park School System since my daughter enrolled in September of 1999. While she was in elementary school, I worked in the library self for the secretary, was part of the PTA, and a president of the association for four years. In addition, I volunteered my time to help around the school with several events throughout the years. I also have been involved in the Lincoln Park High School Marching Band since 2006, helping them alter their uniforms. Before I was elected to the board, board I had some experience with the Board of Education. I served as a, on different committees within the school district when parents' involvement was needed. As a current bo school board member, I am on two committees, Buildings and Grounds and Curriculum. The Buildings and Grounds Committee has been working on fixing up schools inside and out. Some of the improvements that we've been 
making include new windows, roofing, boilers, and flooring. We also have been working on rebuilding Hoover School. All these improvements are, have been made possible by the safe, dry, warm bond that was approved by the voters in May of 2019. These enhancements are necessary for the school to keep our buildings up to date and to keep our students safe. The curriculum committee is always looking for new ways to better the the curriculum for our students. Reading coaches have been implemented and we are making sure that our, our teachers and students have the tools they need to succeed. One recent program we've been successful in has been the setup of the early middle college for our students to get an associate's degree while simulating uh, getting their high school diploma at no extra cost to the students. Sorry. I would like to continue being a Lincoln Park School Board member to make sure that our children get the opportunity they need to succeed in life. Please vote for me so I can continue supporting our children. Education is a key of our children's tomorrow. Thank you.